All right, hi. I'm Liam Fries. If you ever see myself and my father driving around Clarkston with the back seat down in the van and a couple of shovels and buckets in the back, you might think, who are these guys? Uh, are we construction workers? No, I can't build anything. Are we gardeners? No, I can't keep anything alive either. Are we grave robbers? Maybe. Um, but what we actually are, are salt collectors per se. We drive around, if we see big heaps of salt on the side of the road, we drive up, hop out, scoop up the salt, and drive away. And there are two reasons we do this. Number one, for my reason, the huge lumps of salt are terrible for the environment. When the rainfall happens, the runoff of that is so toxic to any aquatic and plant life, it kills anything it touches. And for my father's reason, it's because why would you buy your own salt? Um, so <laughs> many families are like this. They all have their quirky ways of saving money and protecting the environment. Whether it's your mom keeping your room at a cool 72 degrees or 62 degrees, uh, your brother turning off the lights while you shower, or if you're a salty crusader like my father and I, uh, we all do our best to protect our local communities. But what happens when we take that to a macro scale? How does our government protect and maintain our environment? And if you had to guess, what would be the most popular energy source of, our, of our, the world? And if you guessed, fossil fuels, you'd be correct, uh, but more specifically, it'd be coal. It'd be over 30% of all worldly uh, energy consumptions come from coal, and that's not really a good thing. It, coal is the dirtiest of all fossil fuels, and for every ton of coal burned, uh, roughly three tons of carbon are emitted, and that is not good, especially because one U.S. coal facility will burn over 500 million tons of coal in its life. So. This burning of fossil fuels has caused pollutants to rise in our environment and the continual warming of our globe has resulted in the destruction of some of our environments. So how do we maintain this? And in fact, this has alerted a lot of biologists and a lot of environmentalists to come up with new and uh, clean energy source ways. So uh, recently, a paper just got published by over 75 biologists writing to Britain's government and the US government about nuclear energy. Uh, so as a, the cleanest, greenest, and most reliable energy source is nuclear energy. And I thought the same thing as you probably, that sounds crazy, right? Radioactive isotopes and frogs with seven legs. Uh, nuclear energy just certainly doesn't seem like the most green energy, but as I did my research, I came across some very interesting things. So firstly, the power concentration of nuclear energy is insane. Uh, a golf ball sized piece of uranium is enough to supply any individual with enough energy for his lifetime. That's you, me, every person in this room and every person on the globe gets a golf ball and they never have to burn anything ever again because all their energy is going to be su uh, suffice. If you wanted to do that with coal, you would need 800 elephant sized bags. If you wanted to do that with oil, you would need 55 tankers. And if you wanted to do that with, uh, if you wanted to do that with rechargeable batteries, you would need a skyscraper for every man, woman, and child. Uh, so secondly, the thing that is also very nice about nuclear energy is uranium, which is the main component, is 40 times more abundant in our soil than silver. And so if we switch tomorrow on nuclear energy, we could maintain that growth for another 100,000 years and still be going strong. And the last thing that's really important about nuclear energy is there's no air pollution at all involved in the process, which means that there's no more carbon being emitted in our atmosphere and there's no more habitats being destroyed by global warming. So if you're, you know, you need a refresher on chemistry class, what is, what is nuclear energy? How does fission work? Well, I'm, I'm your professor for today. See, we have the most ra common radioactive isotope that is used in nuclear energy, which is uranium-235. And it basically, what you do for nuclear energy is you shoot a neutron, a tiny little particle at it. It becomes uranium-236 very shortly and breaks into two smaller elements, releasing energy and more neutrons and tardy, tiny particles, creating a chain effect. And those tiny neutrons go on to do the same thing with more uranium. And this amount of energy released is quite effective. And uh, to explain how this works in a nuclear facility, I'm going to try and use, if this can work, uh, 
it doesn't seem to. Ah, it's okay. That ah, was just nothing. All right. So a nuclear power plant will work by you have these uranium rods and a control rod in between every single one of them. And as this neutron fission uh, happens within the uranium rods, these control rods control how the nuclear fission occurs and how fast it occurs. The water around it, which is what I was going to use with this electric kettle, uh, w heats up and is, went in, is swept away into a cooling bay where it releases its heat as steam, which ends up powering a turbine, which ends up powering our electronics and our homes and everything that's nice and dandy. So that's great. Why do we not use nuclear energy right now, at least? And there's so t two cons for this. Uh, first being the waste and the second being safety. So let's talk about the waste first. Uh, so any nuclear power plant will release in a year 2 to 20 tons of nuclear waste per year. And that sounds like a lot, but remember what we said about coal uh, a few minutes back, that it releases over uh, 500 million tons of CO2 in one year. So that's uh, very little compared to other fuel sources. And 90% of the waste it releases is what's called low-level waste. Uh, another 7% is medium waste, and the last 3% is called high waste. And that's basically short for how much radiation it emits. Low and medium waste, you are able to bury it in a barrel, like you see with those radioactive symbols in the ground, and just kind of leave it there and not worry about it for you know a few decades, and then it doesn't become radioactive anymore. High-level waste, however, uh, you have to have special facilities to treat it because it is heat generating, and that is one downside to that, that we don't have enough of those facilities in the U.S. to properly take care of those radioactive isotopes. Um, so that's waste. Uh, let's talk about safety. Um, for the U.S., you can see here uh, we have uh, nuclear energy is the very low end of that spectrum. It's 0.0011 percent, uh, so it's basically zero. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, so I've heard, you know, Fukushima, I've heard Three Mile Island, I've heard Chernobyl happen before. You know, what is, wh how is this not on there? Well, uh, Three Mile Island and Fukushima actually had no fatality incidents in them. And Chernobyl, uh, that was a completely different story, obviously. The worst environmental accident to ever occur using nuclear energy. But you have to remember that this was during the USSR, and they built this facility uh, with completely improper techniques, and workers were getting drunk on the job, and things were not going right for this nuclear facility. And, and by today's standards for the UN, this would have never occurred again. So. The average age of a nuclear reactor in the U.S. is around 35 years old, and that is a problem because production has slowed for nuclear power plants since the 1990s. And there are a few reasons for this. Number one is negative stigma towards nuclear energy. People confuse nuclear power with nuclear weaponry a lot, and they're very different things, I assure you. As I'm talking about this TED Talk, people are thinking I'm advocating some kind of nuclear war to occur, and that's not it at all. Um, so. Uh, that's, that's one thing. People never discern between nuclear energy and uh, nuclear weaponry. You can't take a uranium reactor and a nuclear uh, power plant and change it into a bomb somehow. That just doesn't occur at all. And in fact, uh, this also occurs within video games and movies a lot. People talk about, oh, we're going to have an apocalypse. We're going to have some kind of uh, fallout. And this is based on, on any kind of nuclear reactor. That's never going to happen. It's, uh, th there's, there's, no, there's no discernible way to create that if you're using just nuclear power for what's intended for. Um, another reason why nuclear power is so uh, undermined in the U.S. is because a lot of lobbying happens in the U.S. government with our uh, coal and fossil fuel conglomerates in the U.S. giving a lot of memory, m um, money to Congress members to prevent the production of alternative energy sources. And the last reason, most important, is that there's just an overall lacking of knowledge among the U.S. population about how nuclear power works and what's beneficial about it. So there are obviously downfalls to nuclear energy. As I was talking about this, there's you know reasons why uh, we need more high waste facility treatments and we need to maintain uh, proper quality of each nuclear power plant to ensure nothing like Fukushima or Chernobyl ever happens again. But relating this back to our families and our local environments, just as we have our ways to care about our environment and do everything in our ability as local uh, community members to care for our environment, we must also make sure that our government stays on task with this as well. So I implore all of you, uh, demand cleaner and safer energies for our future generations to come. Thank you.